Welcome along guys. Well, we're here once again with young Bruce, but we're not shoving our faces with food. Well, we are about to, because there's a cafe. <laughs> but we're here today doing a bike safe course. So uh, where are we, Bruce? Where are we? Finching Field. Finching Field, which is sort of east of London, country lanes. We're here with the Met Police bike safe course. As I said, I've never done any sort of advanced training. So um, it was about time I did it. And if I was going to do any advanced training, it was going to be with the bike safe guys. So from the people who know what they're doing. So uh, stick around. Let you see how I get on, but uh, I'm just going to have a bite to eat now. But uh, Chopsy, roll the intro. Welcome along, ladies and gentlemen. Today I am out with the police. Oh yes, I'm finally doing a little bit of advanced training. I've not done any advanced training before in my life. And I was invited along by Devitt Insurance, actually, to come out a day with the uh, by Met Police. We're following Gordy. Later on, he's going to get us outside of central London because we're at Bike Shed. So uh, he's going to get us outside of central London. And then he's going to follow me for 20 minutes or so, give some feedback on my riding. Oh, looks like that's happening immediately. So he's going to follow me and uh, give me some feedback on what my riding's like. I presume it's no wheelies or speeding today. When you look in a mirror and you see you've got a copper behind you, that's always not something I normally like to see, so I'm going to be getting used to that today. And I've never done any advanced training before, and you know, I've been a motorcyclist since I was 16 years old. There's always room to improve your riding, you know, whether that be off-road riding, track riding, or you know improving your your road riding and that is what this is what today's all about see if i can pick up on some potential tricks and tips which could potentially save your life right, i'm going to shut up now because uh i really need to concentrate on this distracted by the attractive young lady is it a 20 down here leave a little bit of a safety bubble in front of me it's all coming back to me safety bubbles Scanning, scanning, scanning the horizon. Stan scanning everywhere. Start your eyes around. Near ground, foreground, far ground. Also look out for hazards like push bikes coming out. Hazard lady there could fall down the stairs into the road. Things I was always told was ride as if everyone's out there to try and kill you basically. You know, you, you can't roll the dice at any point. You know, and sometimes you do, you know, everyone. They may daydream a little bit, but you really can't afford to do that on a bike. You've got to really minimise any form of sort of daydreaming when you're on your motorcycle. And you've got to ride as if everyone is out to kill you, basically. You know, anyone sat at a junction could pull out, so slow down, ready to ready to stop. Follow me now, John. OK, okay. no worries. We've gone to the A12 for a little bit. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll turn over our half up and then Bruce will go up. Sounds good. Right. Sounds good. We'll a bit of feedback when we get to Acreage. Fantastic. I'm just instantly nervous when I'm out with a copper. <laughs> I must have a guilty conscience. I thought maybe they were going to just nick me when I turned up. <laughs> Bruce's turn now. Go on, Bruce, show him how it's done. You've never seen Bruce ride so well in your life. I've been out with Bruce. He loves to filter, Bruce. He's a filtering king. He filters at any speed, any traffic conditions. <laughs> you watch him now. He's going to be the model citizen, the model motorcyclist. Saying that, he does have some rather large panniers. Bruce with the policeman behind him. Watch out, Bruce. you got a copper behind you. Riding into London this morning, I've realised that it's a different kettle of fish riding in London. L riding in London, rush hour, is just chaos. You know, I had, I had people pull out. I, I nearly got knocked off twice on the way into London today. And it sort of said, well, obviously, if I nearly got knocked off, I wasn't riding defensively enough, you know, or I wouldn't have had close calls if I'd have been, you know, riding more carefully, more being more aware. And, and, I, and I thought I was. So, you know, th there's always room to improve your riding. Oh, come on, Bruce. You could have overtaken there. You could have overtaken. This guy's stepping out to the road. Oh, well, that's it already. Those RTs. I wonder if we get to have a go on that. Get the blues and twos on. 
This is not the normal riding I see from Bruce. So this is way more careful. <laughs> way more careful than what he normally is. He's definitely trying to impress here. Oh, watch this chap. Come on, get round there. Oh, speed camera, I'll still limit 30. Maybe it's not 20. Bruce is getting much longer than me following. He's obviously needs more, more help than I did. I had a very short follow. I obviously realised straight away that I knew exactly what I was doing and there wasn't need for any more following. Bruce is obviously needing a lot more supervision here. He's got a lot more things to say about Bruce, obviously. They've got these positions called position one, two, three. You know, position one being on the left-hand side of the road, two being in the middle and three being on the outside. And you know, when you're going through a set of bends, position yourself in position three for left-handers and then move across to position one for right-handers just to increase your visibility through a bend basically so left position one for right handers keeping your line of sight you know your stopping distance into account position three and you know basically to so you can see around the corners also if you're you know going around a right hander and you're on the outside of the road if you're leaning around the corner your, your actual body could be over the wrong lane even though you're tight your wheels are in the right lane if you're you know if you're hanging on to the right over a right hand corner and you're in position three on the right hand side of the road your actual body can be in in the in the way of oncoming vehicles even though your tires are on your side of the road you can be hanging over the right hand side so that's one reason you know to stick to this positioning another reason is on the sorts of roads i ride on you know a lot of gravelly lanes back roads you'll find that if you if you're not traveling in the the car tracks if you like you're going to get all the gravel and you're much more likely to see some gravel and be and be thrown off the bike you know whereas sticking with where the car tires go you know it's going to be as clean as possible because the cars have been running over that area of road so most of the loose gravel will be worn off bruce is just showing off now he's just showing off isn't he i think we're stopping at the shell garage to have a little bit of a chat about our riding to see what he thinks to uh, how we did. I'm sure he's got a few comments to make about Bruce. Nothing about me, I'm sure. So are you, John. How was yeah. it for you? Bit nervous at first, though, when you were behind me. I definitely had that. Ooh, yeah. was, he's watching me. I've got a couple behind me, you know. I was doing a little while to get over over that. but. So we're looking at safety. Was there yeah. any elements of what you thought? that you were unsafe or you could improve on? Uh, perhaps a little bit close at times to to cars in front, maybe the safety bubble and all that, maybe yeah. I was sitting a bit too yeah. close up behind people in traffic. Yeah. Um, um, when, when we were moving, your two second law was... This, it was this okay. On. And I know in London, and I, I don't know if you guys do a lot of town riding, you might be out, it's, it's, a, it's a different mindset. Yeah, and, yeah. And you're thinking, you know, you get a lot of people, oh, I need to get up, I need to get up because you might have someone overtaking you and I look at the delivery riders well if they want to be between you and that come front well that's on them that's part of your safety bubble really. yeah um so I thought when you were moving along you were, you were a nice distance okay okay so however it was quite consistent when we came to stop you were quite right near yeah the, yeah uh, the rear yeah of the, of the vehicle in front so if you got to imagine like you know, it's a basic car test. If you're on incline, if they're not good at hill starts, mm. they're going to roll back. Or sometimes they may put the reverse lights on and, and that's it. So if you can be that two second rule, yeah. have that distance so you can have good vision down near and side. I didn't see many lifesavers. No, that's something I realised actually. I didn't do many lifesavers there, yeah. In town, and um, mm. what you do for a living, you may do out of town a lot. Yeah. In town in London, you've got cyclists, You've got the uh, scooters, other, you've got delivery riders to cut, you know, undertaking yeah. all this. So there's a good little t tip here. It's if, say for instance, in your uh, pedestrian control crossing, you might have the countdown, 12, 11, 10. That's a good time for maybe you to go, I do my mirror, lifesaver mirror, mirror lifesaver, be in gear, and then obviously it's two, three, two, one, yeah, you go. set to go. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? yeah, it does, yeah, it does, yeah. But apart from that, you know, it was nice and tidy. You dominated the road. It, it, it didn't give me any moments where I've gone, oh, well, you know, that was, uh, <laughs> Good, that's uh, always a bonus, then, yeah. Emotion. What about you, uh, Bruce, then? So when, uh, um, I think it was all right. I 
think it was all right. Looking for that lane of beast resistance, but what was in there was a double decker, wasn't it? Yeah. So we're going to do about an hour now into the country, following me again. A few more country lanes now, you know, out of the city. About that road positioning I was talking about. Motorcyclists make up like 2% of the people on the road and actually like 50% of the actual deaths on the road or something like this. It's a ridiculous amount there and I should have been more aware of that guy slowing down. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a ridiculous amount of deaths compared to how many people and the whole point of this course is just to increase people's awareness of what they can be doing to help themselves you know and it's really valuable when it's about 100 quid to do it it's not a lot of money and you know it could literally save your life so and i think they operate these a lot of you know different forces operate these courses around the country i don't think it's just the met police that do it so what we're going to do is i'm going to ride for about an hour now if he spots anything he wants to pick me up on then we're going to pull over, pull me over somewhere. I'm not actually sure what the speed limit is here. Is this a 60 or is this a... Is this something else? Sometimes I think you can perhaps overthink it a little bit as well when you've got someone sat behind you. It's like being on your test again. It's like being back on your driving test. You know, you, you've, got, you've almost just got to forget that he's there and just ride your ride, you know? I may even go for the uh, overtake here. I'm not covering the rear brake on my foot again now. <laughs> Too close. It's a fail. It's a fail. Yeah, I'm definitely not good enough on my lifesavers for certain. Oh, you're going to have to overtake now. It's always when you come to do an overtake, you're like, oh, it's going to be perfect, he's watching me. That was a little bit late. <laughs> he won't like that one. I was making progress. I was make, just making progress there. Now look what we got behind. Bloody tractor now. I can see quite far ahead. Come on, you're going to overtake there, surely you can see everything coming. I'm going to get a bit too aggressive in my manoeuvres. If he's not overtaking in that situation, I'm going to get criticised for going for that overtake, if that's the case. A bit fast, a bit fast. Speed in. So we've done dangerous overtakes, speeding. <laughs> Probably get the book thrown at me after this. It's coming in front. What does it mean he touched his helmet? I can't remember. Follow me. Wake up. <laughs> Stop being a dick. Oh, we're pulling over. Looks like he's having a word with me. That was horrendous. Horrendous? <laughs> so there's a dodgy overtakes, aren't there? So, tell me about your ride. Uh, similar things before I wasn't covering the rear brake at times again with my rear foot there was a couple of suspect overtakes at times maybe well, I mean, what are the three positions for overtaking? Uh, good question the, the rules of overtaking are what is ahead for me not to do the overtake yeah so you had some warning triangles ahead time we had a pinch point we had one with two warning triangles pinch point and I've yeah. been, I think believe so that's a no-no yeah and also the big big one and you may recall this big one there's no overtaking with offside options driveways laybys and that yeah I know you did two possibly three <laughs> On our police course, if you'd done what you'd done on there, that would have been bye bye. Yeah. That would have been it. You could have waited two or three years. Right? Yeah, really. This is a safety issue. Yeah. All right. I'm glad that you you're doing the overtakes, but just have a little little thing yeah. forward. Look for dangers up. Paintwork, warning triangles, gaps between trees. Is there a house? Can I see a drive? I'm looking out for that. And just have a bit more patience. Hold back a little bit. When you get around that corner, you might go. Well, there's a nice bit of hedge right here. 
I'm on it now. Yeah. All right. That was the main main concern. That's me. A few things to work on. <laughs> I think I'm sort of overthinking it a little bit. I said that to uh, to Gordy there. You know, he said, I said, I think I'm just overthinking it a little bit. I don't find it particularly natural. You know, I'm not riding. I would say as I normally would. I'm overthinking things, and so yeah, not very good. Right, this video, Bruce doing his intro. Welcome back to the channel, folks. It's finally caught up with me. I tell you what, it helps if you hit the post. <laughs> it's finally caught up with me, folks. <laughs> oh, I'll t I won't video you, Bruce. It's, it's off putting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not. I am really. I am still going to video him. Fish finger butty, a lunch of champions. Hang on, my keys in my pocket now. My keys in my pocket. Oh, what a what a knob. All right, nice bit of lunch. Nice key. I know. That's what you want. Don't in that keyless nonsense. That's rubbish. You want an old-fashioned key, Bruce? What's wrong with you? Right, we've had a nice bit of lunch. A nice uh, fish finger sandwich, and now I'm being beckoned to take the lead for the ride. <laughs> I'm being beckoned to take the lead for the ride onward now. Well, wait for this guy, we should have gone, but we've all got to get out, so. So yeah, it's been a lunch now, I'm in the lead again. After Bruce's uh, lead, I mean, Christ, he was overtaking and double whites and in front of cars and he didn't even have much of a talking to. So there we are, bike safe course. I've really enjoyed the day out. I do feel like I've learned something. You know, there's a lot of online tutorials you have to do before the actual day. So there's a lot of videos to go through, learning about, you know, the different processes which are going to be employed and, you know, what sort of checks you should be doing, positioning. There's a lot of sort of technical elements to, uh, to, to how to ride, you know. What I found really, useful I guess is the, the road positioning I mean, I, I, I tend to do position myself in that one two three way to a degree but not all the time when I'm on my little country lanes I may do that a bit more but I think it makes sense to do it all the time um, so that was probably the main thing I've taken away from this you know and I've been riding for 25 years and there's still something I've come away and learned you know, as not as I've never done an advanced sort of course like this before so yeah I do recommend it I really do you know you, training is never a bad thing and I think the bike safe courses with the police they know what they're talking about old bills on, on motorcycles <laughs> they, they know what they're doing so if I'm going to do any sort of advanced training this is perfect for me if you wanted to then take that further because you could do, you know, the IAM, is it? The Advanced Motorcyclist, IMA, is it? IRA? <laughs> There's various options if you do want to go further, but this this will do me from uh, a training point of view. I'm not I'm not one of those. But, you know, it's always good to just to learn a few more tips and tricks, which could one day save your life. You're going the wrong way, Bruce. Straight on. A big thank you to actually Devitt Insurance who put this event on today. Devitt and BikeSafe work together and if you do the BikeSafe course you can get 10% off of your Devitt bike insurance. So uh, have a look at Devitt, check out BikeSafe and uh, yeah it's been a great day, lovely weather, lovely people, very very enjoyable. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time. Could have been worse, could have bought the H2 on this uh, course, couldn't I? With its noisy exhaust, no mirrors and small number plate. I'm sure it would have gone down a tree.